Hello, welcome back to the woods. So you, eagle-eyed, inquisitive bunch, have been asking me lots and lots of questions about this. What is it and what's in it? So in this video, that is what we're gonna look at. Now this is the pack that I carry with me pretty much every day. I use it for work, I use it for play. And this is pretty much my EDC pack for when I'm teaching, working, out enjoying myself. This is what I carry. It started life as a Berghouse Monroe 35 day sack that I bought way back in the early 1980s. And I used it and used it and used it. And eventually, a couple of years ago, I thought, well, I need to retire it because it was literally falling to bits. There was more holes than there were a rucksack. But because I liked it so much, and because it was such a, a useful, practical design, I actually thought to myself, well, what can I do with this? So I stripped down all the parts, the straps, the buckles, everything that was usable, I took off it. I then disassembled it, so I had the parts, and I used those parts to make a pattern. So while it is a relatively new pack, I think I've had it a couple of years now, the original pack and most of the parts, including the frame and the buckles, and the nylon straps on it all come from the early 1980s. Now obviously using it over that length of time there were a few things that I found were perhaps a little bit lacking and so I used that opportunity to change the design a little. The actual basic sack, perfect. But what I did change on it was I added some big mesh dump pockets on the side for stuffing stuff like water bottles, tools, those sorts of things. And a pocket here on the front for things like waterproofs, stove, brew kit. All the stuff that I need to get through through the day, including my first aid kit, which is stashed in the top, it's all there, readily at hand. I don't have to open up the main pack, so I don't risk getting anything in there wet. Now I did make a video of the whole process of what I did with this. I think it's called make your, how to make your bushcraft gear last forever. And if you look back in my videos, you will find that video. Go over and have a look. But what we're gonna look at in this video is the actual contents, what I've got in here, and why I carry it. So what I've done with this is I've set it up so that anything that I'm gonna need through the course of the day, or I may need in a hurry, is in the outside. So in the top pocket, I have stuff that I may need in a hurry. So I have my first aid items, my individual first aid kit. I've also got my field dressing. And I've also got my FUBAR headband. Something else I'm gonna need regularly and in a hurry through the course of the day is water because I need to continue to drink to keep my fluid levels up. So in the side pockets, I've got one, two water bottles. And that gives me two liters of water that I've got with me that will keep me going through the day. Now, for those of you who are regular viewers to the channel, one viewer in particular, you also realize that I need tea fairly regularly through the day. So I have my Bushcraft Store Billy Can Cup and lid over in that side. And I've also got in my center pocket, my homemade methylated spirit stove, windshield, spoon, etc. Everything I need there with my water bottles and my cup to get myself a brew. Now obviously while I'm out, 
I may need to forage. Now I carry my little EDC knife uh, and on there I have a small saw. However, I also carry a little Openel number 12 saw. Great little saw, very, very lightweight, cuts very, very well. Do need to be careful with them because the blades are very highly tempered and they can snap. So you need to have, be a little bit careful when you're using it because with these ones, as far as I'm aware, you can't replace the blade. So a great item, but you need a little bit of care while you're using it. Obviously also through the course of the day, it may start to rain. So ideally, I want to have something weatherproof that I can pull on to protect me and my pack. So in here, I have one of my waterproof ponchos. Great little item, GI style item. Lightweight, quite big. I can use it to cover me and my pack comes down quite a long way so there's no need for waterproof trousers it can also double up as my shelter as well so I have pegs and my pouch and my jungle toggle sets in And my last item, well, if I'm out and it starts to get dark and I have to put my pack down, I may need to mark where it is. So I've got one of these, my little kit markers, and all these are, is a little big biro pen sawn off. And it's got two of the mini little float lights, the mini silooms, with a length of paracord on there. And you can hang it up above where your rucksack is to give you a point of reference in the dark where you can attach it actually to your rucksack. Now one other item which I've got attached to the outside is this and this is the handle for my cold steel trail hawk. Now what I tend to normally carry is my Norland hatchet. Not everyone can get a Norland hatchet, they're as rare as hen's teeth nowadays. <clears throat> so what I thought I'd do for the purposes of this video, and it is something I use quite a lot, I've got my little cold steel trail hawk. This is the handle. The actual head of it is carried, tucked away with my other tools inside my pack. So going into the main body of the pack, well in here there's all items that I want to keep dry. So opening this up, everything is stashed inside a dry bag. Now I've got a purpose built dry bag, it's an army surplus job. In the past I've used polythene liners, rubble sacks, all sorts of stuff. But as long as something is there to make a nice waterproof barrier around the kit that's inside, because it doesn't matter how good a rucksack says it is waterproof wise, you know it's always going to look that bit of water in. So something like this is a good little option to have. So in here I have, to go with my brew kit, my little container with my tea bags. I've also got my head for my cold steel trail hawk in there as well nice and easily at hand so if I need firewood or I need to split firewood I've got the two items handy. I've also got my Mora knife, I'm carrying an EDC pen knife but tucked away in my pack I always carry a knife that's suitable for a bit of woodcraft and this you see one of my earlier videos is pretty much all you need. As well as that, I've also got this, my little fire pouch. This needs no introduction. This has got everything I need in there to get myself a fire going if I need it. Next up, my warm gear. So I've got a pair of gloves and my woolen beanie. Next item is also there to keep me warm. This is my, my 
uh, woolen hoodie, my homemade one. Quite a compact bit of kit, not too heavy. If I'm really watching the weight, then I might take this out and put in, I've got a little cheapo lightweight down jacket. But this tends to be what I go for most of the time. Next up, a set of work gloves, leather, good for protecting my hands while I'm gathering firewood or if, I'm, if my pan gets hot and I need to take it uh, off the fire or if I'm taking it off the stove, just there to protect my hands. Next up, multi-purpose item, my Minimal Survival Scarf. Yeah, it's a scarf, it can also be a sit hammock, it can also be a water filter, it can be a browse bag that I can fill with vegetation to create a bed if I need to, if I'm suddenly benighted. This covers all of those options. Next up, my little odds and sods bag. And in here, there's one or two items that I may need through the course of the day. Extra cordage. A sharpening board, so I can keep my tools sharp. Sawyer mini filter, uh, and one of these platypus collapsible water bags, so I can process water if I need to on the trail quickly. Obviously I have the ability to boil water using, using either my stainless steel cup or my bottle but this is there for speed and convenience. Obviously with that I've also got my little lightweight water filtration bag and that helps to get the sediment out of the water before I process it either by boiling or using with the soya. Last couple of items, a torch with a, a set flashing mode in it which flashes SOS and a whistle, again just in case of problems, and I've also got one of my little opportunist pouches. That's my little odds and sods bag. A dry bag with an extra change of clothing in. And that's if I do get wet or if I do need insulation. I've got a little parachute nylon uh, suit in there and a set of merino thermals that I can pull on as well. And then last but not least, a set of these seal skin socks. Now I tend to wear boots that aren't lined most of the time with, with Gore-Tex. They're either a leather lined or a Cambrel lined boot. So if it's really, really wet, then the water may come through and these will help to keep my feet dry. I can also use them if my boots do get wet, perhaps if I've had to fall the river, when I get out the other side, I can empty my boots out to get rid of the water. I can then pull these on and walk my boots dry. So there you go, that's the contents of my pack. The only item that I haven't shown you is my food items. And I usually carry just a few snack items, unless I'm further afield from home, in which case I might put in a couple of army boil in the bag type rations that could be eaten either hot or cold and have loads of calories, loads of fat, loads of energy, loads of protein. And that's there as an emergency if I need it. One last item tucked down the back, my little sit pad, needle pad, whatever, creates a barrier between the damp cold ground and me. It also, if I haven't packed my pack particularly well, if I've had to pack in a hurry, helps protect my back from what's inside my pack. So this is the gear I do actually carry every day when I'm at work, at play. It's not the lightest gear in the world. I think the whole lot weighs in around about 20 pounds, including the two liters of water and some food. 
which a lot of people go, oh, <clears throat> well, it doesn't seem a lot when you've been carrying it every day for a very long time. At least the last 15 years, certainly the vast majority of my, my time is spent carrying this little pack. And what I have found over the last 15 or so years of using this particular kit is that all my needs are pretty much covered. Yes, the brands of the individual items may have changed. It might be a different axe, a different make of saw. It might be my wool hoodie. It might be my lightweight down jacket. Those individual elements have changed. But all of my needs have been addressed. I've got a shelter item in there. I've got warm kit, I've got the ability to get a fire going, I've got first aid, I've got water. Most importantly, I've got stuff to get myself a brew. And if you are looking for the basis of a kit that you can carry, or perhaps you're just looking for a few new ideas to help boost your own kit, or perhaps change it, or modify it, then feel free to use this as a starting point or to nick any of the ideas that are in there. So if you enjoyed this video and you found it useful, then remember hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, remembering to hit that notifications bell so you know when I've got new stuff coming up. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. The links are in the description box down below. And as mentioned, you can also become a patron and there's lots of benefits to becoming a patron. You get a heads up on when the kit goes in the shop, you also get uh, some exclusive how-to videos as well as discounts etc etc so check that out as well as i said the link is in the description box down below i think that's everything i've been neil and until next time stay safe in the woods <laughs>